Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share a comparison between the brand new Sony ZV-1 on the right and the RX100 Mark V-A on the left. Now these cameras are incredibly similar, but also very different. In terms of pricing, the ZV-1 has just started shipping $750 US dollars. On June 28th, it will go up to $799. The RX100 Mark V-A has been out for over a year and is $800 and roughly 50 US dollars retail right now. So at the top of this video, the first thing I will let all of you know is that if you're trying to decide between these two cameras, I will answer that right now without any detail. Go with the ZV-1. Now, if you're wondering why I've come to that conclusion, continue watching the video and you'll get that answer. So the first thing you need to know is that the ZV-1 and the RX100 Mark V-A share the exact same sensor exact same autofocus system, and exact same lens with ND filter, the same f1.8 24 to 70 mil piece of Zeiss glass. But that's pretty much all that they share in common, quite frankly. Uh, otherwise, the ZV-1 has no OLED EVF, which is right here on the RX100 Mark V. Uh, and then in addition to that, it has no flash, where the flash is located on the Mark V. I'm gonna get these right next to each other. We now have a tri-capsule microphone array, which, as far as I'm concerned, is one of the best in-camera microphones Sony has ever uh, put inside of a point-and-shoot camera on the market. Where the OLED is, we now have a hot shoe. And where the power button is, we still have a power button on the ZV-1, but we don't have a mode dial. Instead, we have a mode button. We also have a video record button, as well as a defocus uh, button above it, which allows you to essentially do exactly what I just said, defocus backgrounds uh, so that whatever's in the foreground is the primary subject of focus. And that, of course, has become a very uh, popular feature on smartphones uh, that you could always achieve with uh, manual focus, and the right pairing of lens and sensor, Sony decided to give it a button, which I don't think is a bad thing. Uh, the actual shutter button, pretty much the same. Uh, zoom toggle, the same. And build and overall construction quality, not the same. We have a uh, plastic build on the ZV-1, magnesium alloy on the RX100. Another thing you should know, and I've mentioned this in uh, my ZV-1 video, uh, the update on overall performance, which you could probably consider a full review just about. The RX100 does have a ring on the lens assembly, which you can assign to either control focus manually or use it for zoom control. That does not exist here on the ZV-1. The ZV-1 also has a video tally light right there above my thumb. So when you're recording, you know. Whoever's on camera will know that you're physically recording. That does not exist here on the RX100. Uh, but the key to the ZV-1 is that it has all of the capability other than the sensor and the lens. So when it comes to autofocus, uh, execution, real-time tracking, eye autofocus, it has all of the nuance and nicety of the RX100 Mark VII. The RX100 Mark V or 5A does not have that. So even though it has the exact same sensor, the exact same number of phase and contrast uh, focus points, it has the same ND filter in that same lens, it just doesn't have the brains of the RX100 Mark VII here in the Mark V. The ZV-1, on the other hand, does have that competency and that makes it, in my opinion, worth the money as opposed to going with the RX100. Now, you could tell me, Ed, I'm more of a still shooter, so I don't really care about those video features. Well, then you probably, I'm not going to say you shouldn't consider the ZV-1 because the ZV-1 is just as competent when it comes to still imaging as the RX100 Mark V or 5A. However, uh, it's also important to note 
in my previous video about the ZV-1, I said that its buffer was a little bit more shallow. That is not the case. Uh, I confirmed with uh, my contact uh, at Sony that the buffer on the ZV-1 is exactly the same as that on the Mark 7. And that's really significant because that's yet another added bonus, in my opinion, uh, to the overall capability of a camera that you wouldn't necessarily expect. So that means if you're shooting uh, JPEGs, you can shoot up to 169. Remember, 24 frames per second uh, here in the ZV-1. If you're shooting RAW, that means up to 77 frames consecutively. And if you're doing RAW and JPEG combo in burst mode, uh, you'll be looking at 77 as well. So really at the end of the day, this comes down to deciding whether or not you need the things that are missing from the ZV-1. Now the ZV-1 uh, does have a flip out uh, LCD screen that does not exist. You can see it filming my shirt right now, my face upside down. That'll change orientation as soon as I do that. And, you know, I'll do a little peekaboo for you. You can see me on camera a little bit blown out. And you can see it's picking up the eye detection. Let me get that closer. You can see it's picking up the eye detection um, in focus perfectly. I would tell you the background could be defocused, but this is too close of a shot and there's no real background for me to really do that with to demonstrate it, at least in the course of this review that I'm doing now. Uh, in terms of still photography, I don't feel the flexibility of this display is as good as what you get with the RX100 line. Uh, but that doesn't mean that it can't still be a great still camera. So, of course, if you want to, you can flip this around and shoot with it like this in still mode. Uh, of course, in video as well. Uh, I love that we've got the record uh, button dedicated up at the top where it belongs. Uh, I do wish that the hot shoe was compatible with more of Sony's own proprietary accessories. But at the end of the day, I don't know how many people, as I mentioned in my ZV-1 update, are going to care about this shotgun mic. I mean, you can still analog wire this to the ZV-1 and it will work because the ZV-1 does have a microphone uh, jack that does not live on this camera. So that's another thing to note. But the LCD screen on every other RX100 now for generations, this is the self video mode. And then when it comes to taking stills, you just have a lot more positions to work with, uh, to gain angles, than what you can do with the ZV-1. So from a still perspective, that's an advantage to the RX100 lineup. But again, the fact that the brains in the ZV-1, the algorithm, the real-time tracking for video is leaps and bounds beyond what you're going to get out of the 5 or 5A, it just makes me push consumers towards the ZV-1. It's not that the ZV-1 is perfect, it's that you're getting the capability of the RX100 Mark 7 without as uh, advanced an autofocus system because the Mark 7 does have uh, more phase uh, detection autofocus points. Uh, so that is an advantage to its favor. Uh, it just, it's the more modern piece of kit. It also has the advantage of working with Sony's Bluetooth grip, as I mentioned in my ZV-1 update, which I think is really important if you ever plan to vlog. But if you don't, it's still a good option to have just for travel purposes because it does double as a tripod, it is totally wireless, and it does give you pretty much all the controls you're going to want uh, for another 140 plus tax. Now, if you're specifically a still shooter, you may very well miss the OLED EVF, and trust me, I understand. Uh, but in spite of missing that OLED EVF, it's also important to note that if, like me, you wear glasses, this isn't the most practical EVF on Earth to begin with, because with glare and without adding uh, some form of accessory, which is nearly impossible to do, because you know even though this pops out, uh, when you have to take it back into the body and put it back in the camera, where is that rubber hood going to go that you're gonna need? So it's something to point out. And also from a still shooter's perspective, obviously always better to have that flash than not have it. And of course there is no flash here on the ZV-1. Now, when it comes to battery life, um, they're very similar. When it comes to video overheating, also 
very similar. But this camera does have another killer feature from the RX100 Mark VII, which is active steady shot. And that means that when you're shooting 4K video and you don't have to be a blogger, excuse me, a vlogger, confuse those two for a second, right? YouTuber or uh, influencer to appreciate the active steady shot because steady shot has been in essentially all of the RX100 cameras, but when it came to 4K video, there was no real stabilization. Uh, with the Mark VII, uh, we do have active steady shot, and we have that here too. It's another nicety from the RX100 Mark VII that's made its way into this far more affordable camera. An active steady shot, you know, Sony claims gives you 11 times uh, the stabilization you would normally get. Let's just put it this way. If you're walking around filming video with this camera, active steady shot is going to make it not gimbal-esque, but far closer. So while it's not going to give you, you know, the performance that you would find with action cameras like the Insta One uh, R, that's the Insta 360 One R, which actually has a one-inch sensor, or DJI's uh, Osmo Action, or a GoPro where stabilization is buttery smooth, of course, at the cost of quality. And there is a cost of quality here too. It crops it, so you're gonna lose some of what you're filming. The end result is still that you're getting 4K video that is watchable in a way you aren't going to achieve with any other RX100 except this camera and the Mark VII. So that's another huge advantage. You have video profiles, you have Sony's latest color science. These are all things that even if you don't know what they are, you want to have them, okay? You don't want the dated device. So as much as I love the RX100 line, the build quality, ergonomics not the best, and that's, that's another thing that goes to the ZV-1 having a physical rubber grip here, even though you can add one uh, to the Mark V, 6, 7, any RX100, basically, since they introduced the rubber adhesive that you know, I covered back when it first launched. The, at the end of the day, the ergonomics with this camera just simply are better. And the fact that it has a microphone jack is an inherent advantage. Uh, you're not going to find that here. I already mentioned that. Touchscreen functionality with this camera is limited. Uh, it's, it's not going to let you jump through menus. It's just going to be for point of focus, but that's still a good thing. So essentially what it boils down to with these two cameras is that as much as they share in common, again, which is arguably, in many people's opinion, the most critical things, the sensor and the lens with ND filter, that's really where it ends. Because when it comes to the brains, uh, wireless connectivity, Bluetooth connectivity, real-time tracking, eye autofocus, uh, everything is in favor of the ZV-1 since it shares what you would get out of the RX100 Mark VII which is still a $1,300 camera. So even though also they share the same battery bay, SD card slot, and really the same overheating problems with their five minute clips, and yes, you can change the threshold and you can get you know more video uh, and basically ignore the overheating. I said in my ZV-1 update, we don't know what that will do with regard to the internal components of the camera and whether they'll damage them and Sony isn't going to be held responsible either. You turn that feature off at your own expense, quite literally. Now that doesn't mean it is going to destroy the camera, but you know, logic dictates that Sony puts that there for a reason. And this is something Sony's done across many cameras, not just the ZV-1. So, uh, and that's something a lot of us have waited for, myself included. So at the end of the day, while the build quality is better with the RX100 line, while you have the benefit of having an EVF, which if you don't wear glasses can be a godsend in bright conditions, you have a flash, you have far more manual control, that doesn't mean that the ZV-1 isn't still the better camera for you to pick up. And also, as I mentioned, I prefer the screen, uh, you know, the articulation range here but I would never take it over the functionality that this camera has out of the box, being that it really is an RX100 Mark VII in a plastic body with the sensor and lens of an RX100 Mark V-A. That really sums it up. Uh, 
And the fact that the video button is here rather than on a thumb grip is just a major win. The thumb grip is something, you know, the thumb grip record button is a Sony favorite for years that I've lived with and so have many other Sony users. And it's not really something to complain about, but it certainly was never ideal because anytime you'd actually try to stop recording, you were always gonna create some shake and the button is so tiny, you might need, you know, marching fingers to hit it. But still, Sony could get away with it because, well, nothing challenged the RX100 really through, to, in my opinion, still to this point, granted there are competing products now better than years past. Now, the ZV-1 though, you know, it doesn't re, you know, invent the wheel, but it does give you, in my opinion, better ergonomics in every way. I mean, the thumb grip is even more robust. Forget that the placement of the buttons is better. And then things like, you know, product showcase. I haven't really been tailoring this to the vlogger, YouTuber, influencer, because I covered that in my update. And, you know, that's also covered in my full review. But, you know, things like the product showcase, that's just another feature that while it's something you can achieve manually, why wouldn't you want the camera to be smart enough to deal with something like that? Because you don't have to be selling or showing something on social media to want that focus capability. Although it is literally a product showcase mode, I think it's just, it's good to have. There's no reason not to have it, right? It works. Uh, so overall, I think that the ZV-1 has really everything going for it. It's not perfect, just as the RX100 line isn't perfect. Uh, another thing I didn't mention is that if you want to uh, film anything video-wise uh, vertically, just like the RX100 Mark VII, again, this has that capability. So if you're looking to shoot things for mobile platforms like Instagram, this thing is ready to go. That's not happening with the 5 or 5A. So hopefully that gives everyone the information that they're looking for, that they need in trying to determine which one of these is right for them. As I said right at the top of the video, the ZV-1 is the winner, and that's just because it, even though it is missing build quality, a flash, a viewfinder, and more manual control, everything else is in this camera's favor. I mean, it has the brains of a 2020 product. This does not. And while for some that may not mean a lot, again, don't think that because this looks and feels and sounds like more of a video camera that it isn't just as good a still camera as the RX100 line it could, because ultimately it really is. It's just missing a lot of those features that make the RX100, I think, more of a hybrid. This, some might argue, is more of a hybrid, but to me, it's more of a video first camera that definitely is centered on the market Sony wants to hit, again, YouTubers, vloggers, uh, influencers, but that can still be a great family camera, vacation camera, mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, wanting to film the kids, grandkids. And, you know, if you live in auto and you're looking to upgrade from a smartphone, perfect device is how I look at it. So that pretty much rounds it out. There is the comparison, again, between the ZV-1 and the RX100 uh, Mark V or 5A, uh, which is the closer comparison. Any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. Hit that like button. And as usual, please feel free to subscribe and please stay safe. Later.